What's poppin' this mellow back at you with another video and today we're gonna get right to it. We're gonna get into snare rolls. As far as the type of snares that you use to do snare rolls, that was one of the questions that was posed in the request to do this video. So let's go over a few types that I would recommend. So as far as those snares, those are the snares that we'll be using to illustrate a lot of this stuff. And if you notice, the only thing about those as far as the rules that I have, rules are meant to be broken, so break them anyway, but these are the rules that I have personally. Don't use heavy snares that have like a heavy low end that sound kind of deep, and don't use snares that sound like they're layered with the clap. Don't use snares that have a heavy decay and drag out, that's it. So you want something short, choppy, that sounds like it's just a snare, not layered with the clap, not with a crazy decay. So examples of snares that are heavy or layered with claps, you don't wanna use ones like that because even the last one has a long decay. So the way that the format of this video is gonna go, I have a sample. The sample is a sample I made. It's not on anything right now. We're gonna go through different types of chops. So we're gonna go through step chops, we're gonna go through triplet chops, and then we're gonna go through some different types of bar enders, and then we're gonna go over some advanced stuff. I'm not gonna get too deep on this as far as like too much explanation, because when it comes to these, these are just patterns. So you can look at it and tell exactly what it is, and I'm gonna show you where to put it. So with that, let's get into it. I'm gonna play the beat. Now we're gonna go in, we're gonna get surgical with it. So put on your mask, let's get in. This is the first type of chop. Actually, this is not a chop, this is just a pattern. As far as a snare pattern, let's listen to it. That is one type of bar ender. So you wanna put that on one of the even number patterns like two or four, things like that. Let's give an example. Boom, so that's a bar ender. This one is more of a stutter step. So as far as stutter steps, you wanna use them on the off beats, which would be this right here, this right here, this right here, this right here. So that's usually where you would want them on the off beat somewhere like that, but you can also move it right after a snare hits. So you could move it like right here. Let's listen to that. And you might wanna follow it with something like that, like. Boom, so that's a stutter step. Now, what I want you to understand when I'm doing these, you don't wanna make patterns like the ones I'm showing you where you just have the thing going throughout. I'm just showing you where to place it. You know, experiment in different spots with whatever beat you're working with, with that type of chop. Before I continue, I want you to put a like on the video, helps your boy out, but also a lot of these patterns that I'm showing you can be found in the free MIDI kit I put out, the MIDI Gang Drum Essentials MIDI kit, and it's free. You can get it on my website. Let's keep it moving. So this is another type of pattern right here. We're gonna go straight to this. This is another bar ender, really. You could just put that at the end of a bar in the same places that I had the first type of bar ender. You want that on the two and the four. Let's keep it moving to the next type of chop, which is the triple bump. Let's go over that. Now, as far as the triple bump, that's also good on the off beats. Let's check it out. It's also good as a bar ender. You could freak it like this by dropping it one note. That's a classic bar ender. Now we have another type of chop. Let's listen to this. That's also another bar ender. So you can put that at the end of the bar. Now this right here, I like to call this the gallop. Let's listen to it. 
So it's basically a triple bump that's kind of off. And the way that I like to make that, I'm gonna show you, instead of doing a triple bump like this, where everything is perfect, you could either go here and click none, or you could go here and click none, and just slide, slide it just a little bit to the left. That's that, you use that in the same exact spots as you use a triple bump, usually on the off beats. Now, if we look at this right here, I'm not gonna break this down, but this is basically a combination of the triple bump and that little drill joint that I showed you earlier that comes right before the snare. You remember this one right here? All right, and of course you know the triple bump. Let's listen to this. So boom, that's a combination right there. We're gonna transition now into a bunch of the triplets. Let's listen to the full pattern. We're gonna go over some of these. Now, as far as this one, you do that leading into a snare. So with that, you can either put it right before a snare or just like the triple bump and some of the other ones I showed you, like the gallop and stuff like that, you can put it on the offbeat. So just listen to it right here. Those are places where that will sound good. Let's go to another one. Let's listen to this chop right here. All right, so I really like that one. You put that also on the off beats. If you notice the pattern, a lot of these are going on the off beats, not the on beats. Just so you know, if you look at a pattern, this right here, where the first kick hits, where the snare usually hits, those are the on beats. But the beats in between that, like that one right there, that one right there, that one right there, and that one, right there, those are the off beats. So that's usually where you wanna put a lot of the snare rolls at, if you haven't noticed by now. But let's talk about this chop in a little bit more detail and go back to the surgery table and just paste that. So it's gonna be on the off beats, but let me show you how to draw it because there are gonna be two ways that you could do it. So let's stretch this out to about right there. Let's take it, let's go to the chop, and we're on six beat already. So let's do a triple right there. And this right here, group notes, you wanna make sure that's clicked off. You click accept, and then you could just erase that right there. Let's listen to it. Boom, so you could do that, or you could go to one third beat, draw it right in there. Whenever you're done with that, just go back to main so it'll sync back up with this and you'll be back in step mode. So for the rest of the tutorial, that's basically how you do chops. Let's keep it moving. And all, one other thing I want you to notice is that we're using a basic hi-hat pattern. When you start using more complex hi-hat patterns, some of these will fit in certain places, some of these won't. You don't wanna overdo it when you got the hi-hats going crazy. Keep that in mind. This is the triplet stutter step right here. We'll listen to it. That's very simple. That is also gonna go on the off beats in most cases. Now to do this, what you'll wanna do is go to the magnet and then go to one third step instead of one third beat because it's gonna be a finer chop. You know, you're gonna, instead of placing it as close to that, you're gonna take it one space away. You know, even if it's stretched out, you'll see it. So let's do it. Now this one right here is a longer stutter step on a triplet tip. So what you would do for that, instead of the one third step, you would do the one third beat and you would just draw in the two right there, the first two. And of course, that's usually gonna go on off beats. With that, that should take care of the triplets. Now we're gonna get into a little bit of bar enders. So when it comes to bar enders, you know they usually come in this type of format. You could take this and you could do whatever type of chop you want to it. You could do it a triplet. The first one, you usually go and chop that up in some type of way. We could drop that down right there. You could erase a few. You could do that. So you could get real creative, but being honest, usually when I do a chop, 
it's either this is going to match this, like these two are going to match, or I'm only going to do a chop on this first set and leave this bottom one right there. So this is just another variation of what I just showed you. When we basically have the notes going down and stuff like that, you know, that two-step block format. Let's listen to this. Now this is a triplet right here when you just do a flat out triplet. Now you know how to draw a triplet and everything. You could even do a longer triplet where it goes. Let's go to one third beat. Usually people don't do that type of bar ender in a lot of cases, but it could give you a nice bounce. Now this one right here, you don't hear much anymore, but it's the four step bar ender, you know, and you could just chop these up in some type of way like you this is like some real like gz 2010 shit because i haven't heard anybody use this in a long time but let's just do it like this so boom you could do something like that or you could do something like this in that type of format so there you go you got that and that's basically what it is i'm still in one third step with that so with everything I mentioned, we're going to go back to the steps. And with the step pattern, one thing that you can do is basically just chop up what you already have more. Let's take like this bar ender right here. So you see, we just chopped this up and we didn't do it too crazy, but. So that's one thing. Now, one, another thing that we could do is basically a swell into whatever chop we have going. So we're gonna take a note like this. We're gonna put it right there at the top of one of the beats and we will stretch this out. Now going back before we do that, one thing you can do is pan these out. You can pan out a lot of the, you know, rolls and stuff like that to make them sound better. But let's take this and then do a fine grain. Let's do it something like that right there. So we're just gonna listen to it first but we're gonna fade it in after that. Sounds too harsh, way too harsh. So what you wanna do is, so you wanna take the mouse to the velocity, you wanna press and hold both the right and the left clicker, boom, right there. You'll see the emblem change, and you wanna just rise this up into the chop. You wanna rise it up into the chop. So, we're gonna put that up there. Now, if we go to some of these other chops, you can do something similar with that. You can put little accents or grinds in front of them, you know, because it's going right into them. So let's try that with just a regular triplet right there. So we did that there, but let's see how it sounds over the other one. So basically with that, you should have a good gist on chops and where they go and things like that. Again, this is a basic hi-hat pattern. So with a basic hi-hat pattern, you should be able to move around a lot with the chops and things like that. But when you have a more complex hi-hat pattern and there are chops everywhere, you're gonna have less of this going on and you might want to match whatever the hats are doing if you're gonna put snare chops in there. You know, if it's going crazy on the hi-hat rolls and chops and things like that. So I hope this gave you some clarity. You know, please subscribe. It helps your boy out. Let me know what else you want to see. I'll see y'all another day, somehow, some way. I'm out.